Now, namespaces. One of the interesting discussions in the small talk community is namespaces. And uh, how do you identify names when you're compiling? Well, there's a number of rules for that. And in traditional small talk and gemstone, block arguments and temps, method arguments and temps, object instance variables, class instance variables, class variables, pool dictionaries, and then finally, globals. So the question is, where are globals found? Well, in traditional small talks, there's one system dictionary in which the keys are global names. And when you compile, it uses that one pre-built, system-recognized uh, global dictionary. And often it exists in itself as small talk. So you can say small talk is a dictionary where the keys are globals and the values are all the objects. And this in traditional small talks happens to be the root for the object graph. In gemstone, where are globals? When you compile a method, where does it look for the names? Well, in addition to the first six, once we get to globals, Instead of having one dictionary, you can have an ordered list, an array of dictionaries. And rather than that being hard-coded in the VM, you can pass that list to the compiler. So for each method, you can identify a list of dictionaries that will be searched in order to find globals. Each session has a default and the default is assigned when the user logs in. So each user has a default list of globals that are visible to that user. There's extra flexibility because different methods can be compiled to reference different globals. But users can share these dictionaries. So one particular dictionary can be shared amongst multiple users. And so you can ignore the complexity by just accepting the default arrangement. In Gemstone, the root of the object graph is a user profile set. So the users, the collection of users forms the root of the object graph. Users are the basis for Gemstone. Each user has a user profile an instance of the class user profile that identifies the user ID, the symbol list, which groups that user is part of, what their password is, when they last updated their password, and so on. There's access to the user profile for the current user, my user profile, or for someone else's profile if you have security, you can say all users, user with ID, data curator will give you the user profile for data curator. Each user has a symbol list, which is a subclass of array, and the symbol list is made up of a collection of symbol dictionaries. And those symbol dictionaries have keys and values. The keys are symbols, global names, and the values are any object. Typically, they are classes. So again, how do you reference classes? Well, they need to be referenced through a symbol dictionary, which needs to be part of a symbol list, which needs to be in a user profile, which needs to be in the user profile set. Classes, singletons, and collections are all part of the symbol dictionary. What sort of namespace usage do we get from that? Well, you can deploy multiple applications in one database without conflicts. So if you have a gemstone system installed, want to deploy multiple applications, all you need to do is isolate them and there'll be no name conflicts. You can compile application classes separately from your development and test classes. In traditional small talk and development, when you compile your tests, unless there's some namespace protection scheme, 
you run the risk of referencing development and or test classes from your application. But with this namespace approach, you can isolate your application from development and testing. You can compile third-party libraries based solely on the base class, on gemstone built-in classes, so that third-party libraries don't interfere with each other and can be referenced by your application, but they don't have to see your application. No, no conflicts with the application or other third parties. Now, one of the things that uh, we find uh, in Gemstone is changing class schema. How do you modify the class schema? Well, in traditional small talks, you save the new class definition, and when you do, it replaces the class as a value in the global dictionary. When you do that, it finds all instances of the old class in the object space. It creates new instances based on the new class definition for each old instance, copies values across, does a become to swap the old objects and the new objects and preserve the references, and then does a garbage collect of the old instances in class definition. So this is what happens in traditional small talk when you save a new class definition. That's not quite so easily done in Gemstone Smalltalk. First, we have a large object space, and doing all instances is expensive, maybe prohibitively expensive. It might take many minutes or even hours to find all instances of a class. But even more important, the concurrency management prohibits us from changing objects that are in someone else's view. So we don't allow you to change someone else, uh, an object that someone else is looking at. So that makes it difficult to follow the traditional approach. But recall that even in the traditional approach, you don't change a class definition you don't change the schema for an object. It's simply a new one that replaces the old one, and new instances are created, and the illusion of change happens because it takes place quickly. So it looks like you're changing things when you're actually replacing them one at a time. So in Gemstone, the schema changes are gradual. You can create a new class, and it can coexist with other classes, with other definitions for a class. Objects are instances of some version of the class, but maybe not the current, the most recent version. Saving a class simply defines a class and the definition can specify a previous version. You can even have different, a new name for a class, but be a version of an old class. Two definitions share a class history, and then there's protocol for migrating individually, objects individually, or migrating them as a group. And you can create your own methods that help in the migration. So if you were changing um, degrees to radians, you could go through a formula and make the modification. 